Hello, gents. And lady. Now, I know what you're thinking, another Easy CA tutorial. Well, no, it's really just a reference video for myself. If you enjoy it, great. Bonus. But it's really, you know, I had the misfortune of having to reinstall Easy CA last night, and you know what I'm talking about. Great application, but what a pain in the butt to try to remember some of its nuances. Pain. So, this is a reference video for myself. I'm hoping that it will benefit others as well. But I'm going to move a little fast here. I don't want to have to sit through three or four videos down the road. I appreciate those videos out there, but, you know, they all seem hit and miss for me. I kind of don't get everything answered in one, and I want one that's going to answer everything that I need it for. So, that said, so other than right now or up till now, I'm going to talk very fast, and I want to try to get everything covered in a timely fashion and keep this all in one video. Let's get started. So the first thing you're going to want to do is go to the location of track IR. For me, I have the shortcut in my menu here, so I can just right click on it, choose properties, and open file location. And now inside the track IR folder, if you have track IR, you have simconnect.manifest and simconnectsp2.manifest. You want to rename them. I just put dot old at the end of them. You could put dot my cat humps my leg. You know, it doesn't matter. Just rename them. Uh, run track IR. And when this pops open, size that. Now, here's one thing that always drove me nuts with EZCA. No matter how many times I used it or reinstalled it, I never seem to remember this. And if you open up FSX and you launch your track IR and you'll set up your profile and then you launch FSX and then this minimizes and then you have no idea what the hell happened but it's not your profile and then you look it's set to default that happens because even though you would think that the title is FSX it's not because when you install EZCA it has its own listing here so you want to set this to whatever your category is or your profile is I still haven't installed my others yet but that is a good one so then you go into profiles and make sure that it is selected and uncheck true view. You can leave XYZ, just uncheck true view. All right, so I'm going to minimize that. Now, before we get rolling, we I do want to cover world views also because that's a huge question out there and a lot of people have problems with it, including myself. So, to do a world view, you first have to run Easy CA's config and go up to the menu here, options, advanced options. World Cam Wizard. Now it's going to warn you that it's going to have to delete anything, you know, from former versions of EZCA. Your only option is to say, okay, delete. And then it's going to say run flight simulator, so we'll get that out of the way real fast. And I'm just going to go ahead and load my pre flight here. And by pre flight, I don't mean an actual pre flight. Because it says create new flight, select any aircraft, and place it on any airfield. Because what it's wanting to do right now is it needs to build uh, its kind of database thingamajig. Alright, so there we go. So now I'm all set. I can click OK to go to step 3. So now it's searching for the variable. Sounds like a movie I saw. No, that was searching for Bobby Fischer. And there we go. World camera address is found. The address is saved in the to general INI file. All right, this isn't really very informative to you because you really don't know what to do next here, but hopefully I'll explain that. So I'm going to close FSX now. And I'm going to wait for it to be closed. Your screen should flash, or if you have arrow running, uh, arrow or whatever the hell you want to call it, you'll see that you get your life back. And, of course, that's done successfully. Now you can use EZCA version 1.17. Well, I could use it before, but thanks for that. So, that's all I really want to do right now. To address another question, actually, before we get into it, you may have problems with your external views. Let's say you have an aircraft like the Duke, and you have zero views in it, and you're creating views from scratch. Your outside aircraft views might have a skeleton look. And that's a pain. That's a huge pain. So to overcome that, 
what you want to do is after you do any kind of update to any of your aircraft or you do what we just did to be safe just go ahead configure FSX the aircraft configuration has passed da -da -da -da. so get that out of the way right now and you shouldn't have any problems and you shouldn't have to listen to people saying oh you gotta reinstall no you don't have to reinstall you need to have an IQ of more than four <laughs> all right so now I'm gonna relaunch FSX yet again now the first thing I want to do is I want to go into settings and controls and buttons and keys here. I'm going to choose my joystick, which for right now it's just my dual trigger three and one. And choose views for my event category. Go down to the bottom here, close to the bottom. And what we want to do here is your next category, next and current, and previous category and previous previous and current. Make sure you have nothing there. No keyboard assignment, no joystick assignment, and that is for every controller that you're going to use ever for FSX. Make sure none of them are there. You don't want to have anything assigned to them. And if you plan on using that hat switch in EZCA, you better delete its view pan or whatever you have it set to. An easy way to find out what it's set to, if it's not set here, just give it a check and go into something like this and try your T pad or your that switch. Now here it says it's available, so I don't have it assigned to anything. If it was assigned to something, it might say something like this key is assigned to wiping your nanny's nose. And if it did say anything like that or anything at all, what I would do rather than say, oh, well, it's over here, I'll just go find it. You don't have to do that. Just click OK, therefore bypassing its message and assigning it to this new one that's right in front of you and then delete it. Done. So now you can go in and assign it all day long. It's available. Now while you're doing this, also go through and make sure that your arrow keys, your left arrow key, your right arrow key, your numbers, um, actually I can't do it to this view pan here, but anything else. Make sure that they're all clear. Okay. This num8 is actually my up arrow key and left arrow key, num4, num2 for the down and num6 for the right. It's tied into your numerical keypad. So clear all of those. If you plan on using ECCA, you're going to want to clear all of those. No exception. If you're using your keyboard to steer your aircraft, then you're just wrong and you should wait for MS Flight to be finished. So clear and check your numbers 3 and 2 at a minimum. Personally, I clear all of them. I have nothing assigned to actually much at all. If you look, I don't really have crap. Make sure you do that before moving on, and you should avoid most of the headaches that you're going to get down the road. So I'm going to go ahead and open up EZCA. And inside EZCA, let me minimize this. It's a little bright. Actually, I need the Duke which is the one I want to finish configuring for this particular thing. The tripe comes already pre-configured. I want to use something that is known for its skeleton issues and all that good stuff. So here we go. We have the Duke and we have the virtual cockpit assignments, aircraft assignments, and world assignments. Now right now we don't have a world assignment and we can't really set one until we're in the sim. And we'll do that in a minute. What I want to cover now is the other options that you have to do. Now you've just deleted all your keyboard assignments. Now you want to go into your define keys and buttons. And here you want to set them back. You want them here, which is why we deleted them to begin with. So in order for certain things to work correctly, you have to have these set up. Now, these are your own shortcuts to do with what you want. So I move these around all the time. I've never had any problems. So this is how I have mine set up. And I'm pretty sure that's how it was, but I don't know. Other videos show other things, and I don't know if they're wrong or I am, so it doesn't matter. So your joystick assignment you can't do yet until we configure that, and we'll do that next. But global enable, okay? I don't know how many times or how many hours that I've wasted trying to figure out what the hell was going on, because I'm a full screen, you know, simmer, and I often fly on three different monitors. So there is no option for windowed mode. You know, I don't 
particularly like windowed mode, not when I'm really simming. So every once in a while something would happen and it would just stop working. It would just, you know, vanish and nothing would respond. Now again, I'm full screen. I don't have this little, you know, window open here. I don't see active not lit. But that's because of this little global enabled. So I don't want that as three. So I just wanted to point that out. If you're having weird problems and you're not seeing anything, that's probably why. So set this to something stupid like I have it. Control plus the tilde key. Now when you're working on these, if you want to delete a keyboard assignment, I don't think they fixed that yet, but you can't just click in it and have it gone. You have to click in it, hit escape for it to be gone. A little dumb there, I think. But I want to set that back. Control plus tilde key. And we're all set here. We'll come back for the joystick button. And I'm going to go into options and let's go down to track IR. Now track IR, you want to make sure that transform XYZ is enabled. And that's something that we set earlier. Or this is what we took out, the true view in our track IR. This one right here, I disable that. I'm kind of back and forth on this. I like it sometimes, then I don't. I do, then I don't. So that's gone. So into options here, let's go into joystick configuration. And here you're going to want to set your controller. Now, note one thing here. A lot of people might think that they're having a problem and they'll have their window up here open like this or they'll have it still in the settings. And they'll be testing their controls and nothing's happening. You know, they're, they have it set up, they're moving the joypad and nothing's happening. It's not going to happen unless you're actually launched in the flight. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and just load a save flight here. Well, it syncs. Let me explain here. We have the dual trigger 3-in-1, my controller. It has a hat switch. I want to have this set right here, the hat switch as button. Now, what that is, is that's, you know, so I can assign each one of my sides of my D-pad to one of my views. So here I have the left, here I have the right and the back and the front. Okay, so now I could just use my controller and I could go back and forth between all of them. Now this one here, this one right here is for an override button. This joystick button for inverse. Okay, <laughs> I don't really quite follow, but override button. That's, that's what basically this assignment slot is here. And what you're doing here is right now I'm assigning a button to it so I can use the D-pad or the hot, the hat switch for what it's designed for, you know, as a slew or a pan, All right? So I want to be able to not just turn from side to side or from camera to camera. I want to also be able to do this, all right? So right now I'm panning. So if you look here, I have the checkbox, but right now it's disappeared because I'm holding this button. Now if I let go of that button, it now is being used as a hat switch. I'm not clicking on that. And now I'm back to the normal default view. But once I hold it down again, that checkbox disappears and now I'm using it in pan mode. All right, so hopefully that makes sense. Now if you want it the other way around, I like it this way, but if you want it the other way around, uncheck it. Now it's only unchecked because I unchecked it, but now if I press that button, this button here, notice that it's checked. So now it's the other way around. Now I have to hold that, this button 7 down to change my views. And then if I let go of that, now I could pan around. Okay, so it just kind of reverses itself. So hopefully that helps a lot because I know that that drove me nuts for a very long time. Now one other thing that I want to talk about real quick is in the general settings here, you'll notice that I have disabled the middle mouse button. And here's why. Let me uncheck that box. And I'm going to go ahead and open this little guy. And this is an RXP gauge. Now there's something for you. Look, nothing in the bottom, but when I drag this over, I wish they would fix that. I'd like to resize it from the bottom. Anyway, before I go into a rant again, let's say disable middle mouse button. Okay, so now if I click, it has a hotspot here. 
And if I middle click it, or if you middle click it, it's supposed to resize this. It's supposed to stretch it out. Maybe to make, you know, do for this huge issue that they have here. It's a huge issue. So to fix that, just go ahead and disable that middle mouse button. And then you can now go to this hotspot and use it for what it's worth. And that is a great feature. It doesn't make up for this huge space down here being drawn that I can't resize this. But it is a cool thing. The other ones, you know, again, I'll leave those to you. They're pretty simple to understand. So now that your joystick's all set up and everything else, you can go back into Define Keys and you can set up a joystick, you know, key action for, you know, whatever you want. Me, I only care for next category. But you might want to add something to Cycle View around here. And the reason for that is because I'll touch on this first since it's not covered at all in the PDFs that are available. I believe the author does mention it in one post real quick. But here we go. This C right here stands for Cycle View. So if you have like a bunch of different cameras in the list and you want to cycle through all the views, if you want to add these to that list, you can click one and highlight that and click that one and let's say I don't want the back but I do want the close and I do want this one out here and so on and so on and so on. So all you're doing is adding it to the list so then when you do use whatever cycle button you chose, cycle view button, it's going to just add them to the list. So hopefully that makes sense. I don't use that option and that's that. So now I do want to cover a couple things real quick. I do want to cover some of these here and what they stand for, what they mean. Let's go from the top to bottom here. Connected means to FSX. If you weren't connected, it wouldn't show it. Active, that is your global thing. Uh, if EasyDoc wasn't active, then it wouldn't show active. TR is for track IR users. Um, if you don't have track IR and it's not lit, that's normal. Aircraft name, the Duke, or whatever it's named. Now, cockpit walls, you see the line coming off it, uh, you have this L, and what this is here is this is your limiter. So if you go into your options and you set your walls up, you know, your limiter, you know, you can right click on that right there and bring it up where it changes to it. And you could set your different, your thresholds for your cockpit walls, you know, where it is. So your head doesn't go through the glass or your nose doesn't go through the dashboard and all that stuff. So if you want to use those options, you must have this L checked. If you don't have that checked, you're going to go through the walls. And I see a lot of topics like that wondering why, and that's why. The type, uh, this L has nothing to do with this L. This L actually stands for light, and then you have an M for medium and an H for horny, or actually that's for heavy, heavy, like your girlfriend. So the view controls here, PTP stands for point to point. So if I had wanted to go from my pilot seat to my co-pilot seat, and I'm switching back and forth here, you can see that I'm transitioning, but I have PTP set for both. If I didn't have PTP set for both, then I'm just going to snap to it. Okay, so PTP has to be set for both in order for it to work. All right, so there you go. Now, 360 is mostly important for outside. If you don't have it enabled, you have a 180 degree turn span, I believe. So 360 allows you to go around in circles and whatnot for like panning and all that good stuff. POV is your point of view. So if I was like, outside and I wanted to like kind of pan across the aircraft or walk or whatever you had it set for you know without POV selected if I uncheck this I try to back up here I can't pressing the keyboard that thing all right so you want to have that set and then you can walk and do all your cool things ML is nothing more than mouse look if you want to have the mouse to be able to look around which I don't like that option personally and you have Z, so if I want to be able to zoom in and out with my mouse, 
that's that. And then I have TIR. So right now I'm looking around with track IR and all is good. And right now without it, I can't do anything. All right? So the effects here, we have different effects in different categories. World only has one, aircraft has two, and virtual cockpit has three. Now this whole thing was actually designed around the virtual cockpit. You know, it does have its benefits for outside and stuff, but let's go over the effects here, starting with the virtual cockpit since it covers them all. You have the random, and the random is, it simulates the roughness of the surface, and the randomness, I guess, would come into play with the weight of your aircraft. So the heavier your aircraft, or the weight of your aircraft times the variable of the runway surface or surface that you're on is what dictates the randomness or how choppy and bumpy it is. The DHM or the dynamic head movement is more like your acceleration. So you're, you're taking off, you're taxiing, and all of a sudden you push back into your seat. You know, that kind of acceleration or inertia feeling. Your touchdown when you hit and you bounce around a little bit and turbulent weather, okay? In your aircraft view, your outside views, you don't have that, but you do have this. Okay, you do have the camera resonance. And this right here behaves a lot like the dynamic head movement. So, you know, if you do want that effect, then turn that on when you're outside and you'll be fine. Now, each one of these can also be set and tuned, so you can right-click on each one and pop up an advanced menu. It's kind of funny. A lot of people out there probably don't even know that this thing exists. People don't read manuals, and I can see why in this case. Now, one thing I do often, and that is I check the main level, and that is to turn down everything. Like, this one right here affects it globally, while the others do not. So, And that just about covers it. I'm going to actually just jump in here and make sure that I haven't missed anything real quick. Now you're pretty much all set now to do a world view and doing it in the Duke is not a good idea because there seems to be a problem with the Duke to where your world views always end up in your right seat and it doesn't matter if you create them in a different aircraft when you come inside and you cycle through your world views for whatever reason I'm in the right seat. Should I find a solution to that I will update the topic to where this video is in the forum. But to finish explaining, the way to create a world view is to go over to your world view category. You would right click it, choose this only available option here, and go ahead and name it whatever you want. I will name this test. And that's it. If you were doing a different aircraft, you would be able to now go to that view. I do have a couple more things I do want to cover, but let's do that up in the air. In case you're wondering, the scenery is Plum Island from Bill Womack, and it is fantastic. You could uh, find the link in the description. So having these views is pretty great, especially when you're trying to, you know, do video. Now as you can probably see here, this tutorial, or whatever you want to call it, reference video, is lacking a couple things, but there are probably a dozen now tutorials out there that cover the same things, and everything that I put in here, or at least most of it, isn't covered in any of them. So I wanted to get the ones that the things that aren't covered, covered. Alright, let me get back inside here. It's a little cold out here. And move up to the FO. Over to the pilot seat. Just want to cycle back and forth through them, make sure all my settings are right, nice and smooth. Now, my view down here I have all effects turned off because down here, you know, I'm always, you know, trying to be as subtle as possible. I want to be able to 
look at things and not have all that bumping and jarring action. One last thing to mention, if you decide to uninstall EZCA, make sure that you do run the config once more and choose the restore option. If you forget to do that, that's not a huge deal. You would want to go ahead and go into your actual aircraft folder, such as, say, like the Duke. Go into real air, Duke, the aircraft CFG, and then at the very bottom of this, you should have a camera definition in there for universal camera. And just go right ahead and select all the texts and delete it. And I'm going to save this, control S, and exit. Another place would be in your C drive, and then in users. Select your name that you're logged in on, and go into app data, and you have to have show hidden folders on to see this. Roaming, and Microsoft, FSX, and look for your camera CFG, open it. And at the very bottom of it also, you might have an EasyDoc camera, such as this. So, once again, go ahead and delete that and save it. So hopefully that helped out. Hopefully that helps fill in the gaps with what the others might be lacking, or maybe I'm just blind, I don't know. But now I have my own little resource video I can go to whenever I want, and I'm happy I made it. Now to edit the damn thing. Uh, see you later. Happy simming.